Shout out to everyone that bought training and shout out to the people who are about to buy training. And once again, congratulations and appreciation to the Nerd Tribe. You hear a lot of talk about a monetary system. And it's thought of to be exotic. Whereas the average person is part of the monetary system. If you have a job, you have a credit card, you have income, you pay taxes, you're part of the monetary system. But here's the thing. There's tiers in the monetary system. There's the top of the system. This would be the billionaire class. And one thing that people like to focus on is the elite billionaires, the Elon Musk, the Jeff Bezos, the Bill Gates, um, the guy who owns Louis Vuitton. They want to focus on the upper echelon of the billionaire class. And the billionaire class has classes in the billionaire class. There's the elite billionaires. There's the less than elite billionaires. And there's the billionaires who are just barely making it into the billionaire class. But how does one increase their pecking order in the monetary system? Because once again, top of the monetary system is the billionaire class. And the bottom of the monetary system is the average working person. And also for information purposes, if you're in the United States of America, if you're in Europe, you know, London, Paris, one of the westernized countries, you're in the top 10 percent of the wealthiest people on the planet which means that the vast majority of the planet is poor. Africa, the Middle East, certain parts of China. If you're in one of these westernized countries, you're in the top 10%, and this includes the bottom. Like, let's take the average working American. Let's say you have a job and you make $50,000 a year. You have a house, you have a car, you have credit cards. To a person in the Sahara of Africa, you are extremely wealthy. You actually have running water, indoor running water. You're extremely wealthy. So we will be talking about people in the westernized countries because the majority of the planet is poor. These people struggle to find drinking water. These people struggle to find food. There's a lot of food insecurity in many parts of the world right now. So we're only talking about the westernized countries, so the United States, Japan, uh, Europe, and some parts of China. So if you are part of the working class, you're part of the monetary system. But here's the thing. You're at the bottom of the monetary system and being at the bottom exposes you to inflation, it exposes you to the ups and downs uh, and exposes you to potential layoffs. It exposes you to a lot of things. And, you know, when people talk about the monetary system, they want to talk about stocks, bonds, the capital markets, treasuries. And that is part of the monetary system, but that's a very segmented part of the monetary system. How many people here own T-bills? You know, I've been owning T-bills since I was in the military. Um, one of the things that you have to understand is your income dictates how you behave in the monetary system. So if you're like an average person making $50,000 a year with normal bills and you have no wealth, you may have a house where you're getting equity. You may have a car that's paid off. That to me is what I would consider marginal wealth. You do not have a hundred K liquid. That's what I'm talking about. It starts at a hundred K liquid because when you have, 100k liquid 
that's above and beyond what you need to live, this is when you can begin to participate in the more esoteric money segments of the monetary market. This is when you can get into stocks. This is when you can get into T-bills. This is when you can get into a lot of different things. But if you're at the bottom of the monetary system, you could be in trouble depending upon your personal finance habits. And part of your personal finance habits come into play with credit, come into play with your money. And I'm about to say something that's going to sound extremely out of reach, but it's very well in reach if you have good money management habits. If you're a person in that bottom segment of the monetary system, but you have, you make 50,000 and you've got 35,000 cash in the bank for your long-term emergency fund, your short-term emergency fund, and your family operating account, you are exceptional. And you can pretty much weather anything outside a personal illness such as cancer. And to a degree, that $35,000 will help you weather, deal with the issues of having cancer. But you would be an exceptional person at the bottom of the monetary system because you have options in case something goes sideways. But how does one increase their pecking order in the monetary system? You think Bill Gates is feeling inflation? You think Elon Musk? You think anyone in the billionaire class? And these are the people who just have one billion you think they're feeling inflation? You think these people are going to the gas pump and shuddering? No, they're not. So this is an example. You think someone worth a hundred million dollars and has a good cash flowing business is feeling inflation? No, they're not. So this is how you increase your pecking order in the monetary system. First of all, you need to understand where you reside. You reside in the United States of America. And this is the place where you need to have money. The United States of America is a corporation and the state that you live in is a corporation. So to behave in a corporate environment, one must become corporate. So to increase your pecking order in the monetary system, you need to make more money on a consistent basis. Now, why did I put consistent in there? Because many people will go ahead and they will get in the stock market or they will buy cryptocurrency and they will have a good purchase. They'll have a good purchase that will make them money, but it's sporadic. The guy who bought Dogecoin and became a millionaire and because he did not take profits, he's back to where he was. So this is one of the things you have to understand with static investments. Static investments, otherwise, other outside of a dividend paying stock, do not pay you cash. They do not provide income. Whereas a small business provides you monthly liquidity. And this is huge. Now, I'm about to give you an example of how you can increase your pecking order in the monetary system. Let me give you this example. And let's say you are a married person. You and your wife collectively make $35,000 a piece. So it gives you a household income of thirty of $70,000. Now, if you and your wife begin to adopt these behaviors, you will dramatically increase your, your, your pecking order status. Number one, stop living on both incomes. You are married, you are a unit. So you'll sit down with your wife and you're like, baby, we need to make some drastic changes. We got to sell your car. 
So what you will do is spend some months getting rid of all unnecessary debt. This would be car notes. This would be credit cards. You would be working on getting rid of this stuff and willing it down to where you can live on one income. Now, once you do this, now you have an additional income to number one, and this should be first before getting rid of debt. You should have an emergency fund at 70,000. Your emergency fund and family operating account needs to be a 45 to $50,000 cash money in the bank. So that would be mission number one to get that set up. And then you would start, you know, if you have a car that you have a debt on, you could sell that car and get from under that debt. This is some of the stuff you will be doing. So you will go ahead and make your household as lean as possible where you can easily live on this one income, no car payments, no credit card debt. Once again, first mission number one, get those emergency funds established. Then after that, get rid of debt. Once again, you're still at the bottom of the monetary system, but if you go ahead and establish this monetary, this uh, s s uh, emergency savings fund, and you get rid of debt, that will put you in the top 10% of Americans. Just those two moves right there. Now we're about to start cooking with gas. You have the long-term emergency fund, you have no debt, and at this point, you keep your job, your wife keeps her job, and then you start a small business, and we're gonna keep it really simple. Your small business only makes $2,000 a month. You work, your wife work, you don't have a lot of time to devote to this business, so what you come up with is $2,000 per month or $24,000 a year. So this, what this has done is now moved your household income close to six figures. You're, we're at 70, now you're at 94,000. Now what this small business will do is give you tax deductions that you did not have before. You will get these now, these great tax deductions. You will get a home office deduction, you will get expenses. So what's gonna happen is instead of you filing taxes and not getting a refund, you're gonna start getting refunds. So now you've got your wife's income and you've got the small business income. Now you're in the situation where you have four to $5,000 per month to invest. Now, you can invest in the stock market or you can invest in real estate. Let's say you choose real estate. So what you will do is say that $5,000 up, which will give you $60,000 to put down on a down payment. Now, this is where we get smarter than the average bear. Let's say you live in California. You would not buy real estate in California. You would go to the Midwest. You would go to some place where you can put $60,000 down on a $120,000 or $150,000 house and stick a renter in there and get a property management company. Now, because you're buying real estate at an affordable rate, you're building up equity and you have the appreciation of your real estate. And you would literally do this for the next five years, five years. So at this point, you would have five rental properties, you would have a small business, and you would have your wife's income. So you have, between your job, you have four sources of income. And this is something that the average person can do. Once again, uh, creating a business that makes $2,000 per month is not that hard. It could be a YouTube business, it can be an eBay business, it can be a small service business, it could be whatever. But at this point, literally in, let's say, seven years, let's go ahead and put seven years on it, you went from living like the average American to now you have a small business and five rental properties that you now have enough equity where your five rental properties represent, 
let's say you have $300,000 in net worth on your rental properties and your business, let's say your business is worth 100,000, so that gives you 400,000, and then you have $50,000 in the bank. So that gives you a total net worth of $450,000. And we're just getting started. Just getting started. Because if you continue on this plan for the next another 5 years, which would be 13 years, you will have 10 pieces of rent investment real estate 10 pieces of investment real estate and this gives you all types of options because at this point let's say your 10 pieces of real estate you now have seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in net worth just on the real estate side you have a lot of options because now you you have the option of one of you can quit your job. Um, you, you have so many options. And this is a easy, but here's the thing. It takes time to increase your pecking order because now you have a small business. This gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of flexibility. This gives you amazing options. Let's say you're 13. Unfortunately, your wife comes down with breast cancer and she has to quit her job and she has to go through cancer treatments. And because you care about your wife, you're at her side all the time, you're at her side at the appointments, you're missing a lot of time at work, but you've got 10 rentals that are providing monthly income. You've got a fat savings account. So instead of having the issue, because typically, a illness like cancer will not only have the illness of cancer, but it brings on financial hardship. Now you're only dealing with cancer. So after two years of treatment, your wife has beat the cancer, the cancer's in remission. And guess what? Your net worth has grown because now you're at the point you're sitting down, you're looking at your real estate portfolio. You're like, oh, our rents are at market rent. So we're getting ready to raise the rent. Your rent's gone up, your cash flow's gone up, and your net worth have gone up. And you're just, at this point, you have become what I call the quiet rich. You don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank, but you do have assets. You do have options. And here's the thing. If you didn't, if you, if you just stopped buying real estate at 10 rentals and you worked on getting your rentals paid off, your small business blew up and now you're making $100,000 a year and you just take this money and you pay off your rentals. You could literally retire off those 10 rentals. Literally retire. Literally, and once again, this is a really simple plan, but here's the thing. This isn't something I, I, I like watching bigger pockets and you'll see someone that's like, I got 21 doors in 12 months. Um, this plan will not work like this. This plan will take number one, you establishing a sound financial position. That's first thing. And number two, it's going to take a certain level of discipline because you're going to have access to cash. You're going to have credit, but you're not going to be touching your cash because your cash, the cash in the bank is for investment purposes. So once you get a certain amount of money in the bank, go out and get another real estate property. And that's just one play. That's just one play. And that's why I say real estate, because you can live in California and buy real estate in the Midwest and get real estate that is still, by today's standards, affordable. Stick a renter in there and just increase your net worth. That's one way. Now, you've got your 10 rentals and you and your wife started this plan when you were in your 30s. Now you're in your late 40s. You have 10 rentals, some that are paid off, and you like you sit down with your wife. It's like, hey, let's really put our our hearts into this business. 
And then you grow your business to a million dollar business in a matter of two years. You've had this business for seven, eight years. So to go from to two million dollars after this point, you've learned everything. You know everything about your business. You're set up. You're in the position to win. And then you increase your business to a million dollars. And then after taxes, you have five hundred thousand. And you're not even 50 years old. See, entrepreneurship is the key to increasing your pecking order. Entrepreneurship, and this is why. Entrepreneurship gives you the cash to be an investor. See, the average person doesn't have enough cash from their job to make any meaningful investments. None. That's why, you know, I hear Dave Ramsey and, you know, I appreciate what Dave Ramsey put out. But the average person, if you make 300, if you have enough to invest $300 per month into a index fund that gets a 10% yield, you could do that for 20 years and you still will not have a million dollars. Check my math. Go to an investment calculator and put that in there and see, you will not even have a million dollars. See, the, the, the problem is most of America has an income problem. And this is why inflation, like once again, I'm not trying to brag or boast, but I'm not worried about inflation. And right now I got an American Express gold credit card that I'm running it up because I'm trying to get my sign on bonus. And guess what? I have the money in the bank to pay that bill off. Before I even get to that, you know, because I'm going to wait until a statement drops because it's a business credit card. And I don't have to worry about it hitting on my personal. And I'm just going to go ahead and pay that off. See, what you want to make yourself is inflation proof. And by getting on this plan in some point in the future, when because inflation is going to come around again and you you and your wife and your kids are now you're going to sweat it. Your kid's going to come to you. Hey, dad, you know, we've got this event at high school. It's five hundred dollars. You're just going to reach in your pocket and give him the money. You're going to write a check. You ain't going to sweat it because you've increased your pecking order. See, this is the thing. This this is it's not hard from a scientific standpoint. It's not hard. It's hard from a discipline and execution point. That's where it gets difficult because literally for the first five years of this plan, you're not going to be you're just going to be taking your money and putting your money into investments after you've established a long term emergency fund, after you have finished paying off debt. And this increases your pecking order to the point. And here's the thing. You won't even be worth millions. You'll be worth at this point. 10 rental properties. Uh, Let's say you and your wife now have a net worth of 1.5 million from real estate and cash in the bank. But you have a business that makes a lot of money. So you and your wife, you sit down and you, you come up with this plan that you're going to sell the company to your employees. And you're just like, this is the plan. What you got to do is pay us a monthly payment for the next 20 years. So you got the real estate and you got the income from them payments for the business. So you and your wife literally have $20,000 a month coming in, but you don't have no bills. You have no bills. Uh, I believe that you could retire quite easily on 20000 About to share something with you. I, I went ahead and crunched my numbers. I'm not spending 100K a a year to live like I live, living in a high rise, driving a Porsche. I am not spending 100K a year. So you could retire in style. I guess that would be considered fat fire. 20,000, 240,000 a year. Yeah, I guess, you know, and you don't have to go to work. You don't have to do nothing. Just collect your checks, collect your checks. And you're like maybe in your 50s at this point. Maybe. Just depends on when you get started. Because see, here's the thing. You've got to increase your pecking because at this point you have moved up from the bottom of the monetary system to somewhere in the middle getting towards the top. 
And in that area, the environment is totally different than being at the bottom. At the bottom, inflation's slapping you upside the head. At the bottom, the layoffs are slapping you upside the head. Uh, life events are slapping you upside the head. But as you move up into the, the monetary system, I found out in 2019, I had a heart attack. I didn't work for seven months. Did, did I lose my house? No. Did I lose my cars? No. Because they were paid for. So once again, moving yourself up in the monetary system makes a huge difference when life gets in the way. So go ahead, watch this video four or five times. I'll be doing more like this because here's the thing. Moving up in the monetary system is pretty much what you need to do to have a happy, peaceful, financially funded life. Because you live in the United States of America and we need money to live here. You don't have to move to Portugal. You don't have to move to Mexico. You could continue to live wherever you want to live in the world because now you have the cash flow and the income to do just that. Thank you.